Um, I've made no plan for this particular conversation <laughs> because having <laughs> spoken to both at length um, in the past, this could go anywhere, couldn't it? Um, so, are you a power couple, Cassia? Oh, Already yeah. referring to the, to, the, to, the, to the chat. If we're a power couple, it's, it's only because of her. <laughs> so th that felt scripted, but believe me, it wasn't scripted. Uh, you want at, something from me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Banana it's been, bread. It's been quite a serendipitous afternoon, hasn't it? Because uh, I, I, I came in, but checked in. It's a very nice hotel. Thank you, Rilla. The hotel is lovely. Um, yeah. And there's a lovely... I can't even remember the name, but a trainer shop next door specializing in trainers. And um, lo and behold, I pop in for a new pair of trainers that treat myself once a year to a new pair of pumps, <laughs> um, reasonably priced. Uh, and who should I bump into? Telefini and Cassie Newedoma. <laughs> and Tay, do you want yeah. to show off your, your, your kicks? Also looking for new pumps. Yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. we wanted to get a matchy matchy, but they didn't have my size. So would you... Actually, that's a really good in, isn't it? Uh, let's fast forward to when you're both in your 50s, 60s, would you be <laughs> the sort of couple, if you, you will make it, look at the, look how gorgeous <laughs> and lovely and vibrant and effervescent I mean, if are. you make it together, but... No, 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 we're going to make it. Okay. <laughs> that steady I hand don't on know, the I'm a very tall person and tall people don't live that long, so... That's true, actually. <laughs> oh, the, the conversation's like... Where, where are my tall to... people at? <laughs> yeah, we're going to live long, don't worry. <laughs> We got this. <laughs> I've completely lost my thread. <laughs> um, so, so would you, do you think you'll be the sort of couple that wears matching cagoules or packamats um, in the future? It's up to her. Because that's, yes. that's <laughs> dignified. It's, all, it's easy to take the mick out of, but I think it's love. I can see that for sure. <laughs> I would love to go shopping for both of us and a little dog. We're in the same a little office. dog. So you'd have a little dog in a little, in a little, maybe a little fleece, for example, and you'd <laughs> be in matching with the same shoes. <laughs> with the same shoes. But I still think you'd, I still think somehow you'd work it. I mean, if it was up to her, we would be matching at all times. <laughs> Fortunately, I'm the voice of reason. <gasps> Do you agree with that? I feel like a mediator. <laughs> uh, it's kind of. Feels, I mean, the thing is, there's no problems with your relationship, but this isn't like a live marriage counseling okay. situation. Okay. I feel like this we're on the Jerry chat. Springer. We're on the yeah. Jerry Springer show. Yeah. Just start jumping up and down. So, one thing I've never asked you both, um, and I'm going to ask it now. Um, and many of you may know, but I have a feeling you don't. Um, and it's quite a private thing, so you can say, Matt, I don't necessarily want to answer this, but where right. did you meet, and how did you hit it off? So we met in Qatar um, at the breakfast buffet. Um, that's how it all started. In front of food. the pineapple. In front of the pineapple, probably. So like a, a whole pineapple or chunks? It was chunks. like a tropical section okay. <laughs> of the buffet. <laughs> so the tropical section of the buffet in Qatar. Yeah. Okay. So what was it, like light cheese on offer as well? Or was it specifically uh, like pineapple? There was watermelon, pineapple. watermelon, pineapple. Some mango. Some mango. Some mango. Surprisingly, a lot of tropical fruit in a, such a dessert. You know, it's desert, Qatar is. Well, price is no object over there. You can pretty much like ship in whatever fruit that they, 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 they see fit. Um, so just on the fruit theme, to just get it out of the way, if I were to, there's a program in, in America and in, in the UK called Mr. and Mrs. Do you remember? A lot of you will remember Mr. and Mrs where a couple come on stage and they ask questions about each other, but while the other one's in a little booth with headphones on, so they can't hear. Okay. So, if you look at me now and put your fingers in your ears, well, it's not, probably not going to work, and I ask Taylor what his favorite fruit is, do you think you'll know the answer? Yeah. Oh, so, okay, let's just test it without, because that's going to be awkward, because of the, the sonics and stuff. So what is Taylor's favorite fruit? Banana. Yes. Whoa! <laughs> round of applause! Oh! Oh! What's our, what's our next magic trick? Oh, no, that, that, was, that was pretty... Does anybody <laughs> have a hat? Can you do that the other way around? So... Let's try it. Do you know... Coconut. <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, I was, I'm getting all a bit misty-eyed. Yeah. So, 
So basically, you, you met at the, at the, at the, the, fruit, the fruit bit. Uh, we met at the World Championships in Qatar. So you're both racing. This is where yeah, the, we were you're, both racing. you're both pros. Yeah. Was this 26? Actually, it all, it all started because I was wearing cool shoes. Cool Today shoes. We were shopping for shoes, yeah. And he came up to me. And then he started to like nice flirt. shoes, girl. <laughs> Is that what you did? You did you actually wrap that? Super? <laughs> I was like, hey. So what? What shoes were they? What's <laughs> up, girl? <laughs> you no. from Poland? I think they were high top Nikes. Yeah. We're not sponsored by Nike, by the way. No, <laughs> we're not, not sponsored by Nike at all. Juro. <laughs> so Juro all the way. Yeah. <laughs> Get your Giro's just over there. <laughs> Have you got any affiliations actually at Ruler Live? I mean, um, uh, 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 weirdly, that you want to promote because you've got like 30 seconds. No. <laughs> no, that's, that's nice. No, my promotion. Because people come on stuff. here. Obviously, it's, it's a business, you know. Uh, uh, Chinelli. Yeah. Chinelli. You can see my bike from Badlands if you want to see the, the largest uh, steel bike that you'll ever see. You can see that bike. Yeah. And actually, you can also see my helmet at Giro stand. The okay, helmet yeah. that I wear together with my teammates. The most colorful is one. Is it a used helmet? It is, but... Sh <laughs> <laughs> is it signed or has it got your sweat in it? Uh, both. Both. So, so signed <laughs> and salty. That's, that's, that's quite lovely. Um, signed and salty. It's signed <laughs> and salty. Again, I've lost my thread. I really have lost my you thread. You didn't have a thread to begin with. No. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what. <laughs> I didn't. Uh, I'm to see my pants, guys. I, I really am. But so you, you met up and complimented that we're the, in this together. Yeah, we're in this together. <laughs> and, um, we, we're quite. Actually, it's really quite nice proximity. I think one of the keys to communication is uncomfortably close proximity. Yeah, I I'm think actually more really meetings warm we right conduct, now. Yeah, I'm actually quite hot. Yeah, um, super hot. The stage lights and, and also it's a lovely atmosphere. Uh, that's been uh, no, given to yeah. us. Uh, Thank, uh, thanks, by, guys. By the way, thanks. <laughs> Just, uh, should we give those guys a round of applause? Reverse it. How's that, how's that feel? A bit weird? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit strange. So, okay, so you, you met. What was the next step? I mean, obviously, you've complimented Cassie on her trainers. So how did that progress? Because that's quite uh, an, an early gambit, isn't um, it? So he asked me about my Instagram profile. So okay. then he messaged me. We went out for a coffee date. Was it a DM within Instagram? It actually Everything happened quite fast, I would say. She was open to it. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't get blocked or anything. She's like, yeah, DMs, just yeah. Yeah. We went and had shakshuka. What? Well, I had shakshuka at the coffee shop. Maybe I it was wrong by then. <laughs> I left That's again. right. I was just nervous eating after the date, <laughs> just smashing shakshuka. Uh, shakshuka is eggs in tomato sauce, if you don't know. Super, super tight. <laughs> <laughs> super healthy. Yeah. Yeah. You want to continue? Yeah, because it's then, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then he had a race, so we wouldn't see each other until the end of my race, actually. And we were supposed to go for this date because it was a full moon, super moon happening. And then he just took... because of the moon. <laughs> That's why. And then I decided to ditch him. I was like, I need to run away. She ghosted me. She ghosted you. Yeah. How did that feel, man? Uh, I have abandonment issues. Okay. <laughs> so it took me about six months to get over that, and okay. that's not a joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a long chase afterwards. Right. And yeah. And now then, so you obviously were both. Oh, actually, no. So let's fast forward. 2016, you met up. When did you, because otherwise this is going to be a very, very long interview. It's going through every step of your lives. As much as interesting as clear the audience would be, I think we need a separate ruler live just to sort of have a step-by-step -step go through your lives. But when did you ultimately move in together then? So when did that happen? <laughs> you know, it's, what, what? <laughs> she just moved into my house. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> just... So she was like, oh, that's, that's I need to move out of my apartment. <laughs> there's like, some defenses there. Let me keep my stuff just, in your house. And then... I was just giving my suitcases at his house. And, <laughs> and then uh, we decided to move in. We decided to move in. <laughs> I was happy about it. 
So were you, was it like, when did the toothbrush appear? When did... We've been sharing a toothbrush <laughs> since the buffet, really. <laughs> it was like, want some pineapple? Here's my toothbrush. <laughs> True. Fantastic. No, I mean, we don't share it. That's sick. No. <laughs> Actually, have, sometimes it, it's weird though, isn't it? Because we've all done it. We've all, even with like a friend, it's like you know, you've no toothbrush. You've got your toothbrush. <laughs> we've all been there. Well, stick your hands up. You shared a toothbrush with with your your, your, your other half or your mate. <laughs> your hands else? Up. Be honest. Okay. Hold on. No. Oh, oh no. There's a, there's a the couple. Oh, I, oh right. <laughs> Clearly, we're very unhygienic uh, between the three of us. Feel a bit. <laughs> Feel a bit strange now. It's better than the finger, though. You know, you put like toothpaste on your finger, they're just like, ear, ear, ear. nobody <laughs> likes that. No. Um, any questions from the audience? <laughs> yeah. We could just throw it open now because we covered, covered all the bases. <laughs> oh, there is, there is one question. Oh, actually, yeah. That was going to be my next question, so well done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well done, mate. Yeah. Uh, we used to train, we definitely ride together, but usually like we come back or he comes back quite upset because I usually <laughs> drop his big booty, so <laughs> his ego drops and then I need to make banana bread or whatever <laughs> to make up for it. Oh, actually, do you know <laughs> That's what? That's a long story. We've got, we've got a small montage coming up of, of, of you in action. The production team is just like, run the video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, oh. we, we ride together, not since I retired so much, because honestly, she goes so much faster than I go. It blows my mind, so That's, I can't. You have a problem with like being behind me, because whenever he's behind me, he goes so slow, but if I'm behind him, he like drops me. So That's it's not like true. the competitive part. Yeah. I'm a respectful ride partner. <laughs> so have you ever been out and like half-wheeled each other, you know, um, you know that? Have you ever given it, uh, you half wheel, because right. yeah. he's so tall, so it's better to be like in the front of him, <laughs> then I yeah. can see everything. Yeah, he's a, he's a tall chap. Yeah. He's going to be up road. <laughs> so you're quite a spiritual couple, it's fair to say, isn't it? You, you, you're quite floaty. You just kind of just like float around. I love it. And I've spoken to you both separately, but there was a bit of an overlap when I did these couple of podcasts, and it was quite, quite beautiful. It was it was. It's really lovely, but you, you clearly, you just float through life, don't you? You seem to be having a whale of a time. You clearly like, love each other to bits, which is just wonderful to see. You can feel it. But you, 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 and the reason you're here is because it's not just what you've achieved on the bike, but you're, you're a really special couple, quite unique. And that's what we're trying to do is just, just find out a little bit more about you. So would you say you are quite spiritual? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. In the two different ways, but at the end, it's, all about the same, I would say. Um, I'm Christian. Uh, he did not grow up in religious family, so over time he developed meditation as part of his uh, spirituality that allows him to um, become a better person for himself and for me in a relationship and for others yeah. around him. And I feel like for me it was always the thing that I grew up with as a uh, Christian kid. Um, and yeah, we just have those little things that we practice in the morning, like he wakes up every morning and goes straight into the meditation. Sometimes I even miss a kiss or hug because he needs to rush to meditate. And I have this time to pray and then start making breakfast. And I feel like we always start of the day as a, like a better people to each other. So. Sure. And, and what is it like now that obviously Taylor's, Taylor's retired and you're doing your thing with your art. I mean, you, and you just float around doing cool stuff, don't you? And then you're, you're racing in one of the finest bike races in the world. Yeah. At the very, at the, the very, very highest level. So ha how's the dynamic now with you being, doing what you're doing, Taylor, and you, you're away from home a, a yeah. lot, you know, it's by the very nature of, that, of our sport, you are. How does yeah. that work? It clearly does, but how, how does that work? Um, I would say that at the beginning when he retired, it was challenging at some times because... He wanted to separate himself from cycling, where I was still a professional cyclist, and I was bringing my job, let's say, to home. And sometimes after a race, I would be sad, and he would have to help me out, even though he was trying to uh, separate himself from the whole scene. 
But I feel like the last couple of years, especially after Corona, everything changed. I feel like having his perspective of a rider who was at a very high level and then decided to retire and having the point of view of like how it feels like when you're outside of the sport definitely helps me with a lot of different ups and downs they go through the season. So, yeah, it's been super helpful, for sure. Because, Taylor, I mean, it's safe to say, isn't it, that when you, when you stop riding, you really did stop riding, didn't you? And you, you completely, a lot of riders like, stay within the industry, within the sport rider. There's like a tapering transition period where you basically just stopped riding. And you still rode a bike, but for fun, and you just went off and did something that clearly had been a burning desire for a long, long time to explore a different part of yourself. And, and, and how, did that, how, how did that work in the relationship, from your point of view? Mm, yeah, I, I've been a part of the, let's say, professional sport environment since I was 17, trying to qualify for my first Olympics. So when I retired, I really was just mountain biking all the time, and I didn't want to go out and ride on the road or really deal with even thinking about anything related to road cycling. I just wanted to find jumps and like shred. Yeah. Yeah. And just be kind of like Shredder. a dirt bag a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um and so yeah, there was a little bit of frustration of having to still be we live in Girona, which is like the road cycling capital of Earth. Yeah. It's <laughs> kind of is, yeah, yeah. And uh there was a period For sure of, a lot of you guys were there already, right? In Girona. Yeah. Yeah. There was a period of time where I didn't really want to see cyclists all the time. Uh, but, you know, love is love. <laughs> and I'm addicted to this woman, so uh, here uh, we are. That, that is lovely. Aww. That's lovely. <laughs> I mean, so, so Cassie, from your perspective, I mean, do you, because of the, the level that you both achieved, you're clearly coached. I, I take it you're coached within Canyon Shram in the team. Yeah. So when... Not that you've had any difficult times, you've had a very, very consistent few years, and you've got a, long, a relatively long-term contract to, to the end of 2024, haven't you, yeah. Canyon? Podium in the, in the inaugural Tour de France Femme avec Zwift, of course. When it's difficult, do you defer to Taylor a bit for certain things, or do you defer to your coach? Does, that, does the relationship bleed into the performance side of what you do? I guess invariably it does at some point, but how do you, or do yeah. you just separate it off? But I, I, I would I say mean, that I they bleed wish, together. To be honest, I wish that sometimes I could separate it off. Because sometimes, of course, like, Tay is my best friend, so whenever I come back from a race and I didn't achieve what I wanted, I go to him and, like, I seek help inside him, which is not always good, because... Uh, especially when you race a lot of classics, you travel a lot, and there's a lot of stimulants around you. You have different energies, and basically it's all the time like this. So it's really hard to be uh, emotionally stable, especially yeah. for women. Like, everything is going crazy inside your body. You just did this insanely hard race, and you travel for like a couple hours, then you get home in the middle of the night, and the next day, all what I want to do is like, um, or be very good uh, partner for Tay, but sometimes I come off a little bit differently because I just don't know how to manage my emotions. So we always, not always, but quite often we go through this like a little therapy, let's sure. say, how to bring everything back to normal. You're, you're sometimes also he wants to escape and that's <laughs> the worst for me because then I'm like, oh shoot, now I have to chase back. <laughs> but like you said before, when you're racing, you're also like a killer. You're like in this killer mindset. Yeah, yeah that's also difficult because like when you're in the race, especially in the final, the last, let's say, 20 to 40 Ks, your mindset changes completely. I feel like I'm a different person than to what I am normally. So I have this um, like need to like be the best and need to like kind of like, you know, leave everyone behind me. You have this anger and just like there's definitely an aggression in your style of racing it is there's a real aggression, aggression. and like yeah. i don't know you have it's really hard to explain it because i feel like the adrenaline the stress from the race and the pressure and like everything builds up this uh feeling inside you that you just like you're become you're becoming an animal in some ways 
So then like when you finish the race and you didn't get what you wanted, it's not that everything ends, like everything was what inside you and especially quite often for my teammates, I always want to be a person that brings a lot of life and like, good energy and laughs. But it's like only as much I can do and then when I get home and I have a moment to be quiet, like I feel like I need to let go or release. So like doing it on my own is very difficult. Yeah. I wish I could do that or probably I should like be talking with somebody else. But again, like I trust him so much that it's always the easiest for me to just like go and like vomit at him basically. Vomit at him, that's a lovely phrase. Yeah. A lovely phrase. So how often does she vomit at you then? <laughs> Uh, I mean, Nothing usually it makes too. a signal, I just take my shirt off and then... <laughs> <laughs> that also I like the way you just let that hang as well. You're welcome. <laughs> so, has there been a time then, because there was a time when you, you were in, you, when you were together that you were both running professionally, has there been a time where you've, both of you have actually watched the other race or seen, for, and, and actually felt the need to want to help the other and said, have you ever thought about doing this or that or you did that wrong? Or, uh, do you have, because they're quite hard conversations to have and they're a, a conversation that would generally be on a professional level, mm -hmm. like between a coach and a DS or teammates. So you know, you, you, you're both, well, you both at the same time, very high profile riders, some of the most high profile riders in the, in the entire world. Yeah. But did you ever critique each other at all. I'm interested in that dynamic there. So maybe Taylor first, perhaps. I mean, she's in the front of every single race that she does, <laughs> okay. which is amazing. Yeah. I was not in the front of every single race that I did. Maybe 5% of the <laughs> races. So it's not very often that you would even see me on television. <laughs> you watch a That's woman's too race. Modest, too modest. You watch a woman's race, she's always in the front. So it is very easy for me to watch her and be like, Misho, because Misho is like my love in Polish. It's actually teddy bear, but it was close. <laughs> <laughs> Same kind of thing, my love teddy bear. I mean, you know. You mean I've been calling your mom teddy bear this whole time? <laughs> <laughs> teddy bear. I love the way that just comes to the surface now. Yeah. Of, uh, a couple of hundred this is people. the beauty of speaking two languages, of having Mis a partner that doesn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we get. And actually, in the, in the early part of your relationship, language, I mean, your English has always been exceptionally good, but mm -hmm. was there, I mean, rewind to the first point, in your, what, was, what was the communication like for you, expressing, you know, th yeah. when, you're in a, when, you, when you love somebody, you, the... There's a lot of things that are completely unspoken. The language of love is unspoken, ultimately. Yeah. But still, you need to communicate in, a, in, a, in almost forensic details. How was that yeah. in the early days? Um, yeah, it definitely was different. My English wasn't as good as it, as it is now. So, for sure, I was having difficulties to like express what I feel. But I feel that we just knew that we are in love and we would always make it out somehow. <laughs> There, you would make it work. There was a lot of miscommunication. There still is a lot of miscommunication. Yeah. <laughs> there was a few moments ago, wasn't there? <laughs> on, on stage. But the, the nice yeah. thing I find with uh, speaking, natively speaking different languages is that we have to be more direct yeah. with one another. And I find, I've, I mean, I've been living in, in Spain or Italy for the last 12 years, so I spend most of the time in Europe. But when I go back, to the US and I just, everybody speaks English. I feel like everyone's talking, but they're kind of always talking over each other. Okay. And not really getting to the core root yeah. of what they're trying to say. So I find that in our relationship, we'll have these like crazy miscommunications where she's just losing her mind and I'm like <laughs> totally confused, but it forces us to like just cut the, kind of the surface level so, and yeah. go to so the direct of what we're trying okay. to say. I guess that can be quite helpful really because we, you know, we, in relationships sometimes you don't yeah. want to, you want to, 
Mm. Beat, the phrase in English is beat around the bush. Yeah. And, and um, you clearly want to say something, but, um, but ultimately, with, with the, the lack of nuance in if yeah. you don't understand the language fully, to cut straight to the chase saves a lot of hassle and heartache. Yeah. It's like, it's the truth right there. There it is, you know? Yeah. I also feel like we made up our own language, so... Okay, right. We just like... I mean, it's not like we're... It's not that we have... It's not like... <laughs> oh, it's not like <laughs> conversation in this like, made-up yeah. language, but... Okay, I, I, was, I, was, I was quite excited then. I thought of being a, a bit like the one on, on yeah. Star Trek. This is yeah. the finale. Okay, um, I thought they were going to put some language <laughs> up there for us to speak along uh, briefly there. Um, right. actually, just going back a couple of years to Leuven, because we were in Leuven, or you, or everyone was in Leuven, you were obviously did a magnificent ride to third place in the, in the World Road Race Championships, and we were... You had that enormous bike that you found, the rally. Was um. it the rally, was it? it was, yeah. yeah. And, we, and we were just cruising around. I was doing some stuff for, for somebody else, and we met up. And, and that, there was a lovely touching moment where you were the other side of the barriers, and you pulled up in the car, and you, you gave each other a little kiss. And it was just a lovely... I mean, for you, Taylor, what's it like when you see Cassia performing at the highest, and you're, but, but you're not directly involved in the sport anymore? You're like a fan. On, just give me a sense of that before we wrap things up, what, what that's like. I mean, it's awesome, to be honest, because from my perspective, I know how difficult it is to be one of the best bike riders in the world. And oftentimes, she's frustrated because she doesn't win as much as she thinks she should. But the reality is she's always in the front. And so as a fan of her, as her partner, as a family member, you, you're almost guaranteed, like, this amazing entertainment every time she goes to a race, which is insane. You know, that doesn't happen with everybody. So I feel very grateful that I can just be a part of her success and try to help her. And it's fun to watch. It can be kind of like, you know, you're like, we oh. don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but that makes for, you know, the, yeah. any sort of future result or whatever, like that much more powerful, um, whether they come or not, you know, because from my, from my perspective, what she's accomplished in her career far surpasses anything that I accomplished in my career, and I'm happy with my career, and so I know that she will be happy with her career eventually, so. It's a lovely, a lovely way to work. We, unfortunately, mm -hmm. we've run out of time. I think we could have gone on for, for hours and just nattered, because you're an absolute joy to spend time with clearly love Thank each other you. deeply, which is, I think, something really important these days that we should hold on to, the, the kind of power of love, you know, especially within a sport that we all enjoy and it's so important to us. So thanks, guys. So Thank you very much. Cassie